less stress, more time, more money. Welcome to the Cash Flow Contractor interview. All right, welcome back to the Cash Flow Contractor. We're all about less stress, more time, more money. Um, Martin, we have a special guest yes, from we do. down under. We do. And we were talking before we started recording that it's 26 down there. Uh, 26 degrees Celsius. Not Wait, I wasn't going to tell him that, Khalil. Oh, uh, my bad. My it's bad. 29 in Oklahoma, but now that would be roughly 80 and 86 yeah. degrees, something like that. Yeah. Middle yeah. of the spring. Yeah. So we certainly spring here. Yes. Yeah. We've got, and there's, crossover and, and there's, going all there's the accent, going. uh, yeah. Jan, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having Thank me. Yeah, we, we really appreciate you making time for this early in the morning for you, right? It's what time right now? Oh, no, it's 10 o'clock, so it's fine. Oh, okay. Then we're fine. Okay. Then we're about 6 o'clock Central Standard Time here in the U.S. Um, yeah, Martin, how did you uh, how did you find Jan? Originally? Well, I'm always keenly interested in business topics and just on uh, LinkedIn, came across Jan. She is doing a great service for a lot of people. You have... 31, 32 videos just on uh, pointers. Um, we haven't even mentioned what the topic was yet today. I guess it will no, be in the haven't. title. But the topic <laughs> is Get Paid, which is also the name of Jan's book, excellent book. And I was truly shocked being a Philistine from the middle of Oklahoma that, so you have accounts receivable in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> We have most things in Australia, but not, not quite as many as you. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny that you said that because um, there are some stats that I had looked up. I wrote a book recently, and one of the stats, um, a bank from a European bank that I know insures accounts receivable. And I work with one of their officers over here, and he gave me a statistic that really shocked me, and that is 40% of all the assets owned by businesses in the United States are accounts receivable. That's wow. real estate, equipment, inventory, 40%. I, I'm not at all surprised. In fact, I wouldn't even be surprised if it was higher. Well, that wow. it, it really yeah. surprised me when you think of all the real estate, the inventory assets, you know, the equipment people have, and 40% of mm -hmm. what they own, business own, businesses own, is tied mm -hmm. up in money that they've lent unsecured to their customers. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And the uh, that another another topic, and I see this one frequently with my clients, is that companies will typically have two to three times last year's annual earnings loaned out at any point in time to their customers. So not only all of their earnings and all of their cash, but yeah. also the money that they borrowed from their suppliers and their banks, they've loaned it to their customers. Yes. And it just, uh, everybody knows, or I think all of our listeners understand that they need to collect accounts receivable, but I was just kind of always shocked by those two statistics. Yes. There are some really uh, shocking statistics. Um, I mean, one of the ones that always shocks me is that, um, is that almost 50% of, of invoices are sent out from a business with an error. So it can be a tiny little error. It can be the order number is missing or there's a small calculation error. But, of course, when a customer receives an invoice with an error, Generally speaking, they're not going to pick up the phone and ring their supplier and say, oh, there's an error on your invoice. They're just going to take the invoice and put it aside and think, oh, well, someone's going to get to that later. And uh, so that's, I think that's a real shame and that's what, that's what I try and get across to, to people because that would alleviate so much stress and so many um, cash flow problems. If suppliers just got that right. You know, that, that brings us to one of the key things that I would like you to talk about is 
I know that I personally in my history and business and a lot of my clients now think that the reason people don't pay them is because they don't want to. They're sitting on their money and they don't want to. And you had a series of myths uh, to begin your book. And that, I think that was one of them. As much yeah. as possible, would you kind of articulate those myths that surround accounts receivable and payments? Oh, yes. There, I mean, there, yes, there are many of them. And, and the most... The most crucial one, I think, is the one that you've just mentioned, and that is that customers don't want to pay. Um, and, you know, I think the way that I explain that myth away is to say to people, there's not many businesses that place an order and don't expect to pay. I mean, if, if people were to think of it like that, I mean, yeah, it's just an impossibility, really, that that so many businesses will place an order and not expect to pay. So that's uh, that's a pretty good myth. <laughs> that's one that I like to uh, to dispel. Um, I might have to remind myself actually <laughs> and check my book. Oh yes, and if I ask my customer to pay. Um, because I believe that my customer doesn't really want to pay, if I ask them to pay, they'll go to my competition. And I'm not sure where that comes from, apart from saying that there's this sort of, I guess it goes back to people that place an order with me don't want to pay. Yeah. Um, and so if I ask them to pay, I'm going to lose them as a customer. And, of course, what they don't realise is that a customer that hasn't paid... It's not a good like, customer. <laughs> it's, it's, actually a, it's actually a debt that's in your yeah. business. Yeah. So, um, so and also uh, another myth is that, that to ask a customer to, for payment is always difficult. And that's like anything. Anything is difficult... Until you know how. It's just something That's that good, you need to learn. Point. Yeah. Um, shall I keep going with the missile? Oh, got- uh, they're no, so good. good. Yes, I think so. Because one of the add-ons, and I think you make this point throughout your book, but is that if your attitude is that that dirty, rotten scoundrel doesn't want to pay me, yes. then if I do call him, Yes. That's going to be apparent in my voice, even if yes. it's not in my vocabulary. And yeah. I'm going to be mad and he's going to react and or she, mm-hmm. and it's just going to be a snowball mm-hmm. effect. Mm-hmm. It has yeah. to stop somewhere. And I think that, that you've made it clear it stops with us. Yes. And so we can go back to, to um, you know, the fact that almost 50% of invoices are sent out incorrectly. And so... If your invoice is sitting on your customer's desk in their pending pile or it's in their inbox and if you um, leave it until the invoice uh, should have been paid and it's not paid and you don't realise there's you haven't asked the customer and then you keep leaving it, the customer doesn't pay and you think that, yes, the dirty rotten scoundrel doesn't want to pay, and get on the phone and blast the customer, and the customer thinks, "Oh, well, I've just had a query, you know." So if you if you go if you make a call, and I I always I always recommend that people make a call before the due date, just to make sure is everything all right, Mister Customer? Is, was our service okay? Was the product okay? Was our invoice okay? Mm. How are you doing today? Then. If there is a problem with the invoice, you can fix it really fast and then still get paid by the due date and have yeah. built a bit of a stronger relationship with your customer. Good relationships. Yeah. Um, I got to, and I, I know we're going to kind of bounce around here a little bit, but a, a question I have, you know, you've, you've mentioned this um, invoice opens it, put it to the, puts it to the side. Someone else yes. will deal with it later. Yes. Um, that is with a physical invoice, electronic invoice. I'm sure it's open the email, get to it later. 
Yes. What do you, but I want to know, what are your thoughts on electronic invoices versus physical invoices? Um, do, is there one that you've seen that's better? Um, personally, uh, personally, I like them. And um, I mean... You, I know, get, you like electronic or physical? I like electronic invoices, yes. Right. But, but that could be because I do quite a lot of work online now. Mm-hmm. Um, t- I guess from people that I work with, I would say there's like a 50-50 balance. Sure. Yes. Lots of small business owners um, are still not completely online or completely au fait mm-hmm. with online. So, um, but, but younger people most certainly are. Yeah. And what about the ability to pay online? Like, isn't that a lot easier for um, people to pay your invoice on time? Well, again, um, I find it really easy, um, and I know I know younger people do actually. So yeah. I think the same applies. <laughs> okay. Um, I think you know some businesses have a process where they pay. I don't think many. I don't come across many people that many businesses that deal with checks anymore. Right. I don't know what it's like in the US. Well, for contractors, I think what for a lot of them, they are getting checks because these are very large uh, purchase prices that they might be dealing with. Maybe they're a subcontractor that's getting paid by a general contractor for $30,000 or $50,000. And so they are getting a check because they're trying to avoid the processing fees on the credit card. Oh, I see. Right. Transfer. Yeah, so they can do transfers, and that happens for sure. Uh, Martin, I mean, I don't know if you think differently, but I, this is a conversation I have with contractors all the time. Right. No, it happens. It uh, seems to be another step for a lot of people. Uh, the, right, gen- exactly. the generals are the one who have to know how to do the ACH, the transfers. Mm-hmm. Not very many people actually do what we used to call wiring. Uh, yeah. And Jan, I'm sure you're familiar mm-hmm. with the term. I, but ACH may be the same thing, but it's certainly the moral equivalent if it's not an identical uh, and i I think really the dilemma is for the contractor i think um man at least from what i've talked to them about man i have sent an invoice that's a uh email invoice and i sent it by mail whatever and i'm waiting on the check and i know that they would pay me if i offered credit card but i'm gonna get dinged two and a half percent and if the transaction's a hundred dollars, not that big of a deal. But okay. if the transaction's a hundred thousand dollars, now we're talking about a significant amount of money for them. Yeah. So, it, do you? I mean, I know that for them, it's like, man, is it worth it getting the money in via credit card faster, like almost immediately, or should I be waiting on the check and trying to get it? And I think what maybe your book will really help, and what you work on, is actually helping people still do the check method but still getting paid fast as if it were a credit card. Yes. I mean, uh, I guess it depends how, uh, how, um, I mean, for, for very large invoices and very large amounts of money, uh, suppliers need to be really vigilant, really yeah. very vigilant because <laughs> one default can, can and does um, make a business fail. Uh, yeah, and so, and so I, I, I guess if suppliers are organised enough to actually manage the payment or manage the the invoice all through the let's say the invoice is on thirty days from date of invoice, so I, I think as long as the supplier manages that process to make sure that the check does come on the 30th day, and that's really basically what I teach in, in my book, um, then, you know, it's obviously a risk, but it's a short-term risk, and yeah. it depends how much the fl- supplier feels comfortable, um, you know, comfortable about the, the, um, the customer's um, credit. But, uh, but if someone didn't feel so comfortable, I, I think... It will be worth risking the percent, yeah, to get it instantly. To get it yeah. in. But, but don't, 
do you not have um like so for example um people that i work with and this is what i did in in my own business um we paid we paid bills every friday and so i had a finance manager and she would bring me a pile of bills that she had uh, sorted out all i had to do was get sign okay we can pay all those and then she would just set it up on her computer and the money would go from our bank account to all those different bank accounts um do you not have that process there there are people that i have some clients on that and there are some right. steps in that that annoy them but uh <laughs> it can uh, it can absolutely happen uh, okay. yeah so so that is a way to do it uh okay. from the payment from the payment side what okay. i'm looking for is somebody that lets me drive into their account and take the money when i want it we oh, don't have okay. that yet but i'm working oh, on it no. okay. <laughs> we're working on it <laughs> okay well that's in fact that's quite different to australia then and i think the uk because um because most smes would pay in the way that i've just described okay yeah yeah, yeah. Well, one, one thing, kind of circling it, bringing it all the way back around, whatever method is used, and Khalil makes a really good point that it is important here to make it really easy for your customer to pay you. And, yes. it, and if, if that's through transfers or cards or, or clicking on an email with a link in it or PayPal or even something like that, then yes. that helps. But back to your key point is they're not going to allow that or they're not going to pay it if the invoice is wrong. No, that's right. Right. <laughs> that's right. So that's the we first step in making it easy. Right. And, and you, uh, you had said, I, I, I think we'll probably come up to this, but I don't want to miss it uh, because it was just a major takeaway out of your book. And it was your statement that people buy from people that they like. People <laughs> like to pay people that they like. Yes. And I just think that that's a really... That's a guiding principle. I've, I've put it a little out of place in the conversation anyway, but I thought that was a really yes, important. I mean, it's extremely valid. And, um, and we should talk about that uh, right at the beginning, yes, because, um, yes, we do. We, we, and, in fact, that would take me on to another point because, okay. you know, um, nobody can – or not many people can naturally sell a product – we, we actually learn how to sell something to someone else. And so the, the whole transaction isn't closed. I mean, a sale is lovely and people celebrate a sale all over the world. <laughs> I've made a sale, I've made a sale. Right. But they don't tend to celebrate when the sale's been invoiced. <laughs> which is sorry, which, when the when the um, the sale has been paid for, which is really much more important. And <laughs> that's so, a great point. And and as much as we have to learn to make a sale, we also have to learn how to get paid for that sale, so that it's Absolutely. swift and easy and less stressful, and we don't have to worry about not having money to pay our suppliers and so on. And so it's just a it's just a small learning process, actually. It's not. Right. Um, it's not rocket science. It's really yeah. an administration process. Well, and and it's being aware of that. Um, something that you wrote or said somewhere that I saw made me think about this. But in my forty six years in business, I have truly seen hundreds of business plans. I've probably written a hundred myself, and it dawned on me. I have never seen a business plan that planned for the failure to be paid. Oh, they, yeah. That's a, good point. a lot of them, about half don't plan for the fact in their little columns or I, I'm, uh, yeah. I, let's say in my little column, I don't want to yes. belittle anybody that, Oh, here are my sales. Here are my expenses. Here's my profit in my first month of business. Yes. Oh, isn't that great? Well, when you take a business plan to a next level, of sophistication, you say, well, wait a minute, my average collection is going to be 30 days. So the, although I might have made this money, the cash isn't going to show up for the until the next month. And therefore, I need to borrow this much more money to fund my business. Yes. So 
uh, just the idea that nobody plans to not be paid. They also don't plan to celebrate payment, but I am 100% with you. And I think, Cleo, we ought to start instituting that with our mutual clients is payment day celebration. No, absolutely. Well, something that we do, and sorry to cut you off, Jan. um, Something that we do, there's whenever we're going through a, uh, what we call a sales pipeline creation for a client, where we are setting the stages that they go through in order to close a sale uh, or to close a deal. You have, yeah, the first step is maybe an appointment scheduled. Then you're going to gather the project details. Then you're going to send over a a quote or a proposal. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to maybe follow up. Then you're going to maybe have a planning meeting and close the deal. Well, one of the stages that we put on there uh, is um, payment needed. And then it doesn't get closed one, like the job is not complete. It still shows up on a salesperson's uh, pipeline yes. if they have not paid. Yes. And, and only when they paid does it count as a closed deal. And so what that does is it doesn't only put the accountability on the administrative side of, mm. hey, we need to get this invoice paid, yes. but it also puts it on the salesperson side. Because yes. what likely happens in a sales process is the salesperson is the first contact with that customer. Yes. And they usually build a rapport where that person likes them, yes. right? Love and works with the salesperson. So if the salesperson can also be following up yeah. and saying, hey, you know, we, we've done this job, we've done this project for you. Is everything okay? Can we, can we close that invoice out? Yes. Then, then they're able to close the deal and get rewarded for it. Most definitely. Um, and in, in the business that I had, um, which was a service business, um, so I had consultants, which were which were salespeople, and um, they understood. You know, the, I guess I guess it all comes from the top in a business. You know, it's like this is how we do it here, and so they all knew that. Um, you know, they all knew where the money came from to pay their salaries and to keep the business going. It came from customers, and so they all knew that if they. Um, if they made a sale to a client, that they wouldn't get paid, they certainly wouldn't get paid commission only when, well, they would get paid their commission only when the invoice was was paid. Um, and that was, you know, this is how we do it here. This is this is the right way because we can't pay you until we've got the money in the bank. So, right. and that worked, that worked really well. Um and, and that's just like another illustration, really, of, you know, a sale is fabulous, but it, it can actually finish the company if it's not paid for. So, um, you know, um, we, yeah. we will get, as we go through here, some, some of your specific tips because they're just too good. You know, they're actionable items that people listening can actually do. Um, yes. But you make a point in there that I want to make sure we hit the real cost of not being paid. Right. So I've got a, I think you use $1,500. Let's just say $5,000 invoice doesn't get paid. Um, And somebody kind of shrugs his shoulders. It's been too long. You know, it's been a couple of months. It's uncomfortable. We kind of messed up at the end. I'm going to put that off till tomorrow. Pretty soon tomorrow's next week, next month. I'm just not going to worry about it. And your point, uh, one that I wholly agree with, is that the cost of that is more than the $5,000 you didn't collect. Could you expand on that? Yes, absolutely. Because, well, let's take the $5,000 then. So the $5,000 invoice that we've sent to our customer, well, $4,500 of that amount might be product that we had to buy in. Right. And... 500 might be our profit. And so if that customer doesn't pay that 5,000, we have still got to pay the 4,500 that we owe for the product that we bought in, that we purchased. And that 4,500 comes out of our existing profits. Right. So to make $4,500 again in profits to make up for having to pay that, then if we take this example, we've got 
500, which was our profit, times 10. Right. Which is the which is the 5,000. So which, we've got to make 10 times those sales this, to make up what we've lost. This is the sort of cash flow contractors. We're talking about margins again here. And out of a dollar of sale, a dollar of it's not yours. Only that that five or that ten percent. And if you want to recover the forty five hundred, you've got to sell forty five thousand to get the the forty five hundred back. Yeah. And I think it's really important for people to understand that. Oh, it's. Uh, I'm gonna just tell a story because it happened Monday. I have a client in New York City, and he told me he did not send out a seventeen hundred dollar invoice. And I asked, asked him why. And he said, well, the lady really wasn't that pleased with it. And it just kind of sat on my desk and I just kind of waited. And we started talking about these issues. And I said, besides that, you don't know that. That's your own mental issue. He emailed that invoice while we were on our call. And she responded while we were on the call and said, the check's in the mail. I can't tell you how pleased I am. I've referred you to a friend. And his, <laughs> his issue wasn't that he had incorrect invoices or the wrong address or the wrong. Yeah. It was he wasn't going to send it. And yeah. the reason I bring that up is I know we have listeners because I ask every client, have you ever failed to send an invoice? Oh, yes. Why? Sometimes mm-hmm. because they forgot kind of when we really dig into it, there's a little bit of what I, what I call head trash. Mm-hmm. And, oh, you know, and then it drags out. It's three months and it's four months. You say, oh, well, that's too late to send it to them. They're going to, and they just let it go. But, but your point about it's not 5,000, it's yeah. 45,000 that you've yeah. got to do in sales to go back and recover what you lost. It's just a critical point. And I, I have to say, I think that is one of the biggest reasons for small businesses to to go under because they don't realise how crucial it is to get each invoice paid and to price them correctly. I mean, that's another story, but, right. but um, you know, they have to make a profit. If they don't make a profit, they can't survive. Right. Well, to be to be a little specific, and I'll, I'm going to go back to what's in your book, and you can tell I'm well. I'm just going to overtly plug your book and say, guys, <laughs> if 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 we are being a little too random for you, our listeners, go buy this book. It's set up in a do this, then do this, and put this on this line, stepwise uh, process, uh, emphasis on making sure you get everything invoiced and that you get it invoiced in the correct way, and then into the uh, realm of People like to pay people they like. So, Mm. but you have five step process to getting paid. Would you expand on that? Uh, Yeah, certainly. Um, So, so the first thing goes back to, to this big problem about so many invoices going out with a tiny little error on them. So, the error could be, um, as I said before, could be the order numbers missing. There's a small calculation. But it can also be it's been sent to the wrong person um, or it's been sent to the wrong place because the goods or the product had to go to the warehouse but the invoice had to go to the office and the invoice has gone to the warehouse. And so it's absolutely right. critical, and this is step one, it's absolutely critical to find out from your customer exactly what they want to see on the invoice, who it needs to go to, the exact address, everything that they need to be able to pay the invoice um, without coming back, you know, a perfect invoice for your customer. And I presume that that one technique for uh, discovering that is to ask them. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. It'd be a great start. It'd be a place to start. Yes, 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 absolutely, and and so, and so, what I always say to um, to people is that you know sometimes when invoices aren't paid, if we don't have a connection in the company, if we if we we don't know who to ask, we don't know who's responsible for payment. When the invoice, and this is back to your point, really, Martin, if we we're a bit teed off, 
because the invoice hasn't been paid. We don't really know who to go to. We think the customer doesn't really want to pay. So that presents a huge problem. But if we, right at the beginning of the transaction, if we ask the customer, what would you like to see on the invoice? What would make it a perfect invoice for you? Who does it need to go to? Oh, I'll just have a chat with them, the person it needs to go to, and I'll ask them, what would they like to see on the invoice? What address would they like it to come to? And so already you know that it's Martin Andrews that looks after invoices. This is what Martin needs to see. And if there is a problem later on, I already know Martin. You've got a, you've got a relationship established. That's yeah. brilliant. 46 years. I've never done it myself. And as far as I know, nobody I've worked with has ever made that specific call to find out what does a perfect invoice look like and to whom does it go? Hmm. Brilliant idea. Yeah. And Martin, it's an admin call. You know, it's, um, I had a part-time admin person that used to do those sorts of things. It's, it's, it's not something, I mean, I did it at first when I started the business because there was just me and a support person, <laughs> but, um, but no, it's, a, it's absolutely that this whole thing, our part-time admin person will do. Okay. So that's the first step. Oh, that's, in. So, that's step one. Okay. Now, and so, and then step two is, is keeping, is, um, it's keeping in touch with the customer, um, so actually giving them a call, maybe if you're on 30-day terms, maybe after 10 days or so, to say, hello, Martin Andrews, <laughs> I sent you an invoice about 10 days ago. Did you get it? Is it okay? How are you doing today? Does anything need to happen to that invoice? What needs to happen next? And so... You know, it's building the relationship. It's making sure your invoice did get there. It right. is in the right place with the right person. And um, and then, you know, building the relationship a little bit more. Does anything need to be done? And unobtrusive. Nothing hostile in that. Oh, no, nothing yeah. at all. No. I think that the, the way that, that I developed this in my own business was that because we were very, very customer service centric. Um, it, we had to be because it was a very competitive environment and we just had to be better than everybody else. And I'll just interject. I know we're on the five steps, but I'll just interject with something here because as this process developed and it, and it became the way we run the business, totally customer service centric, what happened was that we kept our customers coming back to us time and time again. And it was all to do with customer service. And back to your point, Martin, about profit, when your customers come back to you time and time again, that, that's much more profitable transaction than having to look for new business. Right. And the second thing was, because we developed these relationships with our customers, then they referred us to other people in the industry that might need a supplier. And so we had a triple whammy. We got, our invoices got paid fast because they really liked us and we did all the right things to make sure they liked us. Um, we, we got repeat business from them so another, you know, another profitable uh, action, and then customers were referred to us. So yeah. that was, and I don't know if this came out in the book, I can't remember now, but in the business that I had, the normal profit margins, 10% would be seen to be excellent. Most hobble along on 3 or 4%, and in mine it was 24%. Wow. So that's... The three things that made it so profitable. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. And when you just in passing, when you talk about margins, do you mean all the way to the bottom net profit or just margins between sales and cost of sales? Oh, all the way, all the way to oh, yeah. the profit. Yeah. No, the average yeah. company in the United States, just so you know, seven uh, percent of sales. So if they sell a million dollars, they can expect to make seventy thousand net. Okay. Uh, occasionally, uh, you know, our first target is ten, and then we like to see people in twenty. But twenty-four would just be uh, wonderful. Yeah, yes. most most people here aren't doing that, or in in the industries we're talking about. Well, as a ti- as a tiny aside, again. Um, Obviously, when I was just like anyone else when I started my business, I'd never run one before, so I didn't know how to do it. I, I knew I had to make sales, but apart from that, I had to learn it all the way through, of course. Um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. We were talking about... We were talking about the, the high gross profit margins oh, in yes. Australia compared to here. Yes. So... Um, so I had a service business and somebody told me after two or three years that in any service business, you should be making 33%. So the way the profit is split is that 30, let's, 33% goes to um, the running of the business, you know, the costs incurred of, of running the business, um, salaries and rent and all those o- things. Overhead. Right. Yeah, I've, exactly. 30% went into the development of the business and so all the planning of the future and so on. And, thir- and 33% was the profit. And so because I didn't know any different, I was always striving <laughs> on my business plans to get 33% profit. And I was still quite disappointed. But it was only after I sold the business. Well, you see... Someone approached me to sell the business, and when they found out it was so profitable, I mean, it was like that was it. It was gone because, right. and I was so disappointed. I never got to thirty three percent. And then after, afterwards, I learned that, well, you know, that's that's what people might like to get to, but nobody ever. Does. I, I just can't pass this up with tell, without telling a bad joke. But there's the old <laughs> never do well kid from high school who's coming back to his 20 year high school reunion and he'd been a real goofball and, and uh, a slob and all these bad things, but he landed in his uh, private helicopter in the high school parking lot and he got out and he had two nice looking ladies on his arm and he had a tuxedo on and they said, what are you doing here? We never expected to see you here again, let alone in your own helicopter. What'd you do? And he said, I went into business. He said, what do you know about business? He said, well, not much, but he said, I discovered that if you buy something for a dime and you sell it for a dollar, that 10% margin really adds up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can cut that out. We can, we can edit that. But So anyway, number three of the five steps, the first one was to get the invoice exactly right, delivered to the right person on the right time. The second yes. one, if I understood right, was to make a touch base, follow up call, build relationship, yes. make yes. sure they got it. So yes. on number three. Okay. And that number three is about feeling confident about asking for payment because that's where, that's the problem for lots of people. They don't feel confident. It goes back to this um, I, this myth that I think the customer doesn't want to pay anyway. So this is going to be a hard conversation. But um but one of the key things that that we found was that we need to be prepared. That one of, the reason why people are so concerned about calling is that they think the customer is going to catch them out in some way, and mm. they're going to get egg on their face. They're going to be embarrassed. They're going to be stuck for words. And so, feeling confident, um, the way to feel confident is just have a bit of knowledge. Um, so a bit of knowledge about the customer. Um, of course, if we're doing it the right way, we know we know Martin Andrews already who looks after yeah. our voices. So it's about ha- having a little bit of knowledge, knowing about the, you know, having the invoice in front of us on the screen or where it is, or if it's, if it's a bigger account, having all the invoices listed, you know, so in front yeah. of us. Um, having a little history of the customer, all of those sorts of things. And then 
So we can answer any question that our customer might ask us. Although it always turns out to be one of those things, I thought it was going to be awful, but actually it was really easy. Right. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is we need a get out of jail fast uh, sentence. And mine hmm. would be, or this is what I show people how to do, is that, oh, I'm not really sure about that, Mr. Customer. Let me find out for you and give you a call back this afternoon. Are you there at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock? Or when would it suit you to call me back? And so, I mean, that doesn't happen too often, but it's a really right. good... What's an example of when you would use that get out of jail uh, sentence? Like if what would they say on the other line for you to have to use that sentence? Well, um, I, I talked to your salesman about this previously. Oh, I didn't know about uh, that. Let me have a chat to them and come back to you. Yeah. That'd gotcha. be one. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Oh, I like so, that idea. Get out of jail <laughs> plan. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so it's about, uh, I think I talk in my book about being prepared you know, like a Boy Scout. You have Boy Scouts, don't you? Yeah. Do they have yeah. that motto, be prepared? Well, they're kind of a bad topic right now. They've been sued. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, we'll talk about that off off, off podcast. Uh, yeah. But they, <laughs> they're still here, though, I think. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's that's all right. It's... Yes. And so... Um, so having that little bit of knowledge and having that get out of jail fast uh, expression or sentence um, is is a way. I mean, there's you know there's a few nuances in there as well, but that's the general. Oh hello, did we lose Carl? Oh, that's the general idea. The going back to step two um, for a second, you know. Um, I call that, I call that the inside secret, which is t- you know going back to the customer before the invoice is due for payment to make sure that everything is okay. So, yes, I think I think that's a lot of people would not even well. In fact, I know this. A lot of people wouldn't even consider doing that. But if it's a customer service call to make sure your customer's totally satisfied. It's just, you know, building and building that whole relationship. Right. I think that's anyway. excellent. Okay. So sh- should we go on to step four? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And so, um, and again, we talked about this a little earlier. So this is about what to say, when to say it, and who to say it to, to, to get your invoice paid on time. And if we look back, we can say, oh, yes, what to say. That's in step one because we find out right at the beginning what our our invoice needs to look like and where it needs to go. Okay, so that's that's what to say and when to say it. We say that right at the beginning. And, uh, And the who is we find out who is responsible for making sure that our invoice is paid. And I use this mythical Martin Andrews, um, it's choosing, it's about choosing words carefully. You can say the same thing in two different ways. So it's having a very strong customer service um, centric approach, um, approaching customers um, in a way that is non, totally non-confrontational because good customer mm-hmm. service is really, really rare. And when people, I mean, if we think about all of us here today, we think about the last time we had good customer service, how it made us feel. It just makes us feel great. It goes back to people want to pay people they like. Yes. And they, and they like you if you make them feel great. Yes. Even, you know, on a phone call to a government body or, you know, these things we have to do in our life that, you know, we, and if we go into a shop, someone's charming to us, can I help you? Oh, we've got one of those at the back, I'll get it for you, you know. Just wait here. 
I mean, it just makes us feel marvellous. And you know what? When we give good customer service, that makes us feel marvellous as well. So, so we feel marvellous because we've made someone else feel marvellous. Right, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, so there are so real the whole basic thing is about customer service. Um, and so in step four, I also talk about how to keep c- c- control of your conversation. And one of the little sentences I use is the the I'll do, you'll do finish, which right. is when we've had a conversation with someone and perhaps Perhaps we've had to sort out a query on the invoice between us. Perhaps we've had to go back and forth to get someone to sign it or someone to check the goods were received or any of those sort of small queries. And we've agreed something between us that, okay, you're going to do that and I'm going to do that and then we're going to do this. And so, and that's the I'll do, you'll do finish. So before we put the phone down on what we've agreed, we say, okay, Martin, well, you said you do that. If you do that this afternoon and I'm going to do this, and when I've done this, I'm going to come back to you and then this is going to happen. Clarity. Yeah. So it's clarifying what's been agreed, really. Yeah. It's just, it, it all makes total sense and so few do it. And and I was, I'm just intrigued by, by number five too because it's about red flags and <laughs> what what do you mean by that and what what are you looking for well um and we, we can if go i back. got that right that is step five right yes yes oh, absolutely. Okay. it's I a red flag and a red flag is going back to what we talked about before which is a potential bad debt or a bad debt so when we lose our four and a half thousand dollars and we've got to do forty-five thousand dollars worth of business to recoup that. It's so, so it's making sure that we do everything we can to avoid having a bad debt because it's bad debts that send us broke, and you know our business could fail. So, okay. And for Carlyle's benefit, I'm going to tell a story. <laughs> <laughs> Is it about Morocco? So here's one, here's a big one that I, um, that I avoided in my own business. Um, there was, um, there was a company that was set up in the city. Um, they were, they were a telecommunications company. They were in the news all the time. They were very innovative. Um, everybody wanted to work there. They had a few sort of socialite people, not socialites exactly, but well-known people who'd gone into a partnership to, um, and they were making, to form the company, and they were making great inroads and winning business everywhere. Okay, and they they wanted to um, uh, to buy some something from us. And so I went to meet with them, and I went to meet with them because my the salespeople that I had the time were a bit intimidated because because they were pretty high profile. So I went to meet with them, and I already knew that you know they were everybody's darling as a as a company. And as I sat in reception, I thought, I don't know, this doesn't feel right to me. It feels like I don't know if you know this expression, but all glitter and no substance. Mm-hmm. You know that. Yes. We say all hat and no cattle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought, mm, I don't, this doesn't actually feel sort of too good. Anyway, I went to meet with the senior people who were looking to make the purchases. And they had this whole list of, um, of requests. And one of the first ones was, well, we don't want to pay your fees. We want to pay less than that. And we want you to do this and we want you to do that and we want. And I thought, no, I don't think I like this. Um, So anyone that I feel that automatically asks for reduction in fees, there's got to be an issue there somewhere because 
most businesses put together their fee structure in a way that they can make a profit and so they're always going to be there to be able to service their clients in the future. If I had um, dropped our fees, I wouldn't have been able to run the sort of business that was able to supply great service to lots of other businesses. And so I said no. And my staff were devastated. Oh, they're a really big company. We could have done lots of things with them, you know. And two months later, they were they were bankrupt. Ah, excellent. I kind of thought yeah. that might be where this was going. Yeah. <laughs> Based and on what yeah. you said. That made a massive sort of splash all over. And so it's being very diligent about who we do business with. We, we must do business with people who, who can pay and who will pay. And so if a red flag to me is uh, customers that make things really difficult for their suppliers, um, they don't value what their suppliers do. So that was the illustration. So that's one red flag. Let me see if I can find, uh, yeah, the other red flag for me would be, um, and everyone's business is different and everyone has to run this differently. But if my terms are, I had two different types of business. I had um, business where we sold 30 days from invoice date and businesses, and, and a part of the business was seven days from invoice date, which was Pretty fast, but there was a lot of money involved, so we had to be vigilant about that. Um, but if if I had customers who suddenly didn't want to pay to those terms, then that was a red flag for me because, again, they weren't valuing what we did as a business. I wouldn't be able to keep running the business and to provide this service, that you know, to all our other customers. So... If there's an instance where one customer or two customers want a bit of extended credit to get them over, you know, a particular challenge, then that can be worked with. Mm-hmm. But we have to bear in mind that it is a red flag. It is a risk when we when we do that. I mean, I have worked with companies where They might have been having a merger or some such other thing where they've had to ask for a bit of extended credit. And, you know, I've seen it work really well. But we just have to be vigilant. We have to know. We can't just agree to those sorts of things um, and expect everything to work out. We, We need to manage it. We need to control it and manage it. And to do that runs back, in my mind, to what you said earlier, you have to have confidence. You know, you're not, you're not the servant of your customer. You're a partner, you're a partner with your customer. Yeah. And you're providing a professional service to them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I want to, I'm curious, Jan, and I'm going to kind of let you in on contractors a little bit, but for a lot of them, as many small business owners, I'm sure a, a big deal is they don't have time right? They're running from job to job. They, they're they not sitting and they're not looking at their books every day. They're not looking at accounts receivable every day. It's on their mind for sure, but they don't know exactly who hasn't paid and who has paid day in and day out. And I think one that just reiterates how important it is to maybe have an administrative assistant and to also have systems, someone who is going to be taking care of those things day in and day out. But I'm, I'm curious from your perspective, what allows um, small business owners to succeed with this when they are busy? Is it is it systems? Is it some sort of process that they put in place through software? Is it having the right type of hire in place? I, I think it's having the right attitude. Hmm. Of, it's having the right attitude that, um, you know, how much they want their business to be successful because if we revisit, it doesn't matter how much work they do, 
if it's not paid, then they're working for nothing. And so mm. it, it's really about their attitude to, where, to, to their business. Do they want to, to make a profit <laughs> or do they just want to keep making sales? And if they want to make a proper profit and, and you know, to, to look after their family and to, you know, make a difference in the world perhaps or leave a legacy, then business is not, it, it, they have to realise business is not just making sales and being busy. Absolutely. Business is a holistic, you know, it's, it's making a sale and getting paid for it and going again. It's not just over here making sales. Um, and being too busy to look after the rest of it because that they won't survive. They yeah. can't survive. Or if they do, they'll be sort of like hanging on by a thread yeah. and their, yeah, their profit will be. I, I think that's a, exactly the best way to put it is it's, it's an attitude. Um, and I, I think also something that we haven't talked about that I see in a lot of contractors, it's it's that confidence again. And if they would find somebody that was in, is responsible for this instead of themselves, that is confident, it would really change the way that their business is run. So it's it's either get the attitude, get the confidence, mm. or find somebody that can do it for you. Because a lot of contractors they take it personal. Like I I know someone in particular, Mark. Well, it is it that, is personal. Oh yeah, it is absolutely. But like, yeah. I, I agree. It is personal. I think what Khalil's talking about, it's kind of, is they, they get hit with the lack of confidence. And when, it, when my mind conjures up contractors, I don't think of people, men or women who lack confidence because you see them on the job site and that's not the picture, but scared to invoice somebody because they might be mad or not wanting to make a call because you don't want the confrontation. It's a, it's kind of a different world. Um, and they have to be good in both. And to your point, Khalil, if they're not good at doing that, they need to find somebody who is. Yeah, definitely. You um, had a, uh, you had a, uh, a point in there and, and we can talk about some particular points. I don't want to drag everything on, um, uh, you know, <laughs> read your book completely through here, but you did talk about, you have been describing a billing system, all the steps that you have. Yes. But you also talk about, and this is intrigued me, and that was a collection system. I didn't expand on it. I just wrote down those two words. I don't remember exactly what it was, but we hit a certain date and a system begins to deploy to collect yes. the bill. Yes. If you can yeah. expand on, on a collection set just a little bit. Yes. Well, uh, absolutely. It's, it, it's, it's a strategy to make sure that... Um, you know, every time we send out one of our precious invoices, that's going to feed our family, pay our mortgage, pay our staff. And every time we send one out, we've got a little process in place to to make sure that um, you know we 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 uh, we do the insider secret. You know, we make sure that it's with the right person in the right place. If it's not, then we fix it up really quickly. Because um, I think sometimes suppliers send out invoices whoosh, and right. absolve themselves of all responsibility from it. Suddenly, it's their customers. It's their customers' uh, issue. Well, it's not at all. This is you know this is our issue. These are our invoices, and this is our money that we've sort of lent in good faith, really. And so unless we do, unless we have this little process to make sure that we get it back, um, then, yeah, we're not going to survive. We're not. So, yeah. And it can, it can be simple, a little diary system. Yeah, and, and to Khalil's point, um, it's not, the system is not the contractor driving around in her truck and remembering at 10 o'clock to call the office and say, hey, Call them up and see if they got it. It's just a process that's running yeah. uh, to get the invoice sent out properly and yeah. then to do the the touch, the second step, and then to do the follow-up yes. where just automatically, it's not somebody remembering it. It's it's just what we do in our business. 
That's right. It's, it's just a, this is exactly what we do. We, it's set up once. This is how we do it. This is what we say. Uh, and this is what we do then. And it's really, uh, and I call it five simple steps, I think, because it's just minuscule. But it does take a little bit of time. And so if, you know, a contractor, when you when you say contractor, I'm taking that that you you're talking of plumbers and carpenters and builders. Is that right? Am I right? Strictly, yes. yes. Uh, it ex expands a little bit beyond that. People cool. do other kinds of work. But yes. Yes. Cool people. Uh, yes. Okay. And you know, I have worked with um, with some of them myself on this issue. So I'll give you an example for Carlyle's benefits. Well, <laughs> I give you enough. And, and this is a was a master a master plasterer in um, in the UK. So I had a long conversation with um, uh, a contractor who was actually a master plasterer in the UK, and um, he had been trained by another master plasterer. So he had a really um, he, he was in great demand, um, and sometimes he employed fellows. So he worked on um, what we what. It's called in the UK, you know, very, um, very old buildings, listed buildings, very valuable buildings um, that need this old plus work um, refurbished. And, um, and so he, he was never short of work, but what he didn't do was take the time to have a, a process for his invoices. And so, yes, he was late sending his invoices out. No, he never chased them up. He always thought he shouldn't chase them up for some reason. And um, and so by the time I got to talk to him, he'd lost, uh, he'd lost quite a lot of money in a bad debt. And he had what to him was um, quite a lot of money, outstanding, and he just didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to say. Anyway, we, so we had a conversation and um, and he had the confidence then to ring the person who was responsible for, for payment. And the person, and this goes back to your earlier story, I think, Martin, this, the, the person the, the, um, who was responsible for the debt was absolutely horrified that the invoice hadn't been paid. And he did cartwheels to make sure the master plaster was, yeah. was paid by the next day. So... He didn't mind at all that he'd wrong, and in fact, he was just horrified that his um, and it, it it was a um, it was quite a big quite a big business, like a museum, or so, quite a substantial museum, or something like that. And he was just um, beside himself that he had to And so that taught the master plaster such a good lesson. And now he has this little simple process. He has a lady. Who work? Who lives? I think two streets away from him. Who does this little part-time little exercise for him? He doesn't have to worry about his invoices getting paid. Um, she does it all for him. So all he has to do is um, g give her all the information to write the invoices as soon as he's finished a job, or or if the agreement is you know halfway through the job, or even sometimes before the job, and then. She just reports back every week. This is what's happened. That's what's happened. I've done this. So, you know, it made his business so much easier for him and so much more profitable for him. And Lovely it fellow. Just, actually, it was just yeah. her job. Of yeah, course. It was just a, yeah, yeah, just a job. Do it. Call. You yeah, know, Jan, absolutely. we've um, had you on quite a long time here, and I know you've got your day. There's one more issue. Just one yes. more thing. Um, you talk about terms of trade, okay, oh, yes. and define what that is. But I think w here terms of trade mean 10 days or 30 days or whatever. But yes, can you talk about how 30 days winds up? I think you said it, it can be 62. Yes, yes. Okay. I think this well, is a real important takeaway. Okay. Well, um, I've got a little story about this then. Um, uh, 
So I belong to a group of professionals and one of the professionals is a journalist and he works, um, so he works alone. Um, and we were having a conversation. He said, oh, it always takes so long to get my invoices paid. And I said, oh, so what, what are your terms? And he said, 30 days. And I said, what, 30 days from invoice date or 30 days net? And he said, oh, I, I think they're know. 30 days. Yeah, <laughs> I think they're 30 days net. I said, well, do you know what that means? He said, no, not really. Okay. So if you invoice on the 1st of January, then that invoice is payable at the end of the month following, so right at the end of February. So 30 days net is... Whenever your invoice is billed in January, it should be paid by the end of, at the end of February. So really, if your invoice is dated the 1st of January, you're actually leaving it 60 days, 60 days. before... Yeah. yeah, before the invoice needs to be paid. Yeah. So, and I said, why did you choose 30 days in it? He said, well, I didn't know what to choose, so I just choose. Like I it was an chose... option in the drop-down box on his software and he clicked it. He didn't know, yes. Yeah. And I said, well, why wouldn't, why wouldn't you have seven days? He said, no reason. I said, well, no, so now he's seven days. Yeah, seven days. <laughs> And so, he paid you handsomely for the advice, I think. <laughs> I think that was at a lunch or something. <laughs> so, well, that, yeah. just, just on that subject, one thing I talk to my clients about is put a date in there instead of the net 30 or all the options. Put oh, due on January 14th. Yes. And definitely. I know that some people, when they're coding their payables, if it says net 30, they put something. If it says January 14th, they put that on yeah. there and yeah. it pops up in the rotation. So, I. I to be quite honest, I think net 30 is a really difficult one for many people. Many people that I come across, small business owners, are, are like the journalists. They don't really know what it means. <laughs> right. And so I would always recommend for people to have from invoice date, 30 days from invoice date, 14 days from invoice date. Right. And it makes it much easier for, yeah. for everyone. What's... Is there a particular, I mean, it depends on your um, competition sometimes, you know, you've got to be competitive. But um, I think anything, for me, anything longer than 30 days from invoice date is losing, is leaving a lot of money at risk. Well, a that's the, money. it goes back to the point we made earlier that a lot of my clients have more than yeah. double their last year's profit loaned out yeah. at any time. Yeah. And so they're yeah. scrambling for cash and they've not only loaned out what they have, they've loaned out yeah. what they've borrowed from their suppliers yes. and their banks. And yes. it's a, it's a fatal, fatal rock yeah. hanging over your head all the time. And all for a little admin process, really. Right. Um, I, I, I was, I was very fortunate um, when I first started my business, another little story, um, I didn't, I, I had really limited funds. I'd arrived in Australia, um, I was sort of newly divorced, I didn't have a house anymore, and I'm not sure I didn't have a car, I don't think, so, I, I, and I had very limited funds. And so, by the time I started my business, which was about two years later, I had still pretty limited funds. I still didn't have, you know, a home or anything. So I was never going to be able to get a loan anyway. I absolutely had to get paid. And um, and so I, I got it wrong in the first year, but after the first year, which is when I had this little five-step process by then, because I really, I nearly made one big mistake in the first year and nearly Enough. lost, yeah. But, um, but after that, you know, I built the business to a $12 million turnover and I never borrowed a cent. <laughs> wow. I, it, it all got paid from... Out of earnings. Got paid, right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, Jan, there profit. are more points here, uh, but I'll leave them as hangers. Uh, okay. Confidence, the <laughs> killer invoice, uh, training your customers, keeping your cool. There are a lot of good points. But if my kind of takeaway 
big general is the key elements are you, you must have confidence. You have to say, cool. You have systems to bill systems mm -hmm. to collect, uh, which include following up. And if you do those things and do them routinely, and, may, and when I say you, I don't mean you, the owner necessarily, but somebody yeah. in your office does them routinely, you yeah, can lift this insufferable burden off your shoulders and actually go forth, have more fun, make more money and yeah. less stress. Right, Leo? Absolutely. Right, exactly. So, yeah, absolutely. But we have yeah. to thank you so much for yeah, uh, thank you, Jen. joining us and uh, your books get paid by Jan Reeves and it'll be in the show notes, right? Uh, oh, absolutely. Deal? Absolutely. And, and then a website. Don't just, you don't just hear that and look at it, go buy it and yeah. make a goal of doing even just one of the things on there right. a week or a month or something and you'll have improvement. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, in fact, one of my, um, one, someone that read the book when I first published it said that if you just follow the key points and the to do's at the end of each chapter, you're like, you're like 90 percent there. So, wow. yeah. And the other the other point you made is buy this book and give it to all your customers so that they can yes. pay you on time. Because the reason they're not paying you is because they're not getting paid. That's one of the That's reasons. Right. So. That's a good well, Jan, one. it was delightful to talk to you with your Australian accent. It's Hopefully. British. Okay. Well, I don't really know the difference, but but I thought oh. I did. So. Well, yeah. It's it's a little bit of both, yes. But yeah. it was it was, uh, it was a delight to meet you both in person yeah. and um, or on Zoom in person. <laughs> and a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah. Okay. All well, right. Thank, thank you. you so much, Jen. Bye, Jen. Bye. Thanks for listening to The Cashflow Contractor. Check out our website in the show notes or visit thecashflowcontractor.com. 